Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And the news that Sebastian Vettel will be retiring at the end of the year. Which means my predicting the 2023 Formula 1 grid video is already wrong. And that's the worst thing about this. I'm happy for Sebastian Vettel. I think he should have probably retired maybe two or three years ago. But he's been... There's no doubt he's like an icon of the sport. Four world championships. Honestly, in 2013, when he's winning nine races in a row, that's an impressive stat. Lewis Hamilton's never done that. Lewis Hamilton's never got close to that. So, you can take that away with him. And it's going to be interesting to see what he does next. Whether he'll go and, you know, do whatever Nico Rosberg does, not racing. Or if he will get involved in something else. Because obviously we've got the hypercar manufacturers coming through. I'm sure a team like Porsche would love to have Sebastian Vettel. And I would like to see him in other stuff. I think it's always a shame when these drivers retire and then don't do anything else. It's nice to see their names crop up in other series occasionally. It's not like I'm saying he should like do a full season of IndyCar. But, you know, if he turned up for a couple of races in DCM a year, that'd be pretty cool. And I'm sure he'll still be involved with Formula One. He does seem to have an old, like a older brotherly relationship with Mick Schumacher. I'm sure, like if I mean, depending on where Mick Schumacher is, he could be going to Aston Martin. Who knows? But I'm sure Sebastian Vettel could be hired as like a personal coach or something. I think this does leave Aston Martin with a space to fill because I don't think they'll sack Lance Stroll now. I think they will want some consistency. I still think they should get Felipe Drogovic, regardless of whether he wins the championship or not, because I think he's actually a very good driver. Failing that, names we've seen linked. Nick De Vries has been linked, because he's a Mercedes employee, and he has like done Formula 1 tests and stuff. So he probably wouldn't be a bad fit. And I've seen Fernando Alonso, although apparently he's close to signing another deal with Alpine. Which means I've got that one wrong as well. But I think that's a bit of a shame because it means Oscar Piastri would be on the sidelines. Unless Aston Martin take him for a year. Which I... I, mean, I guess, but... You, I mean, do you really want a new driver? It's difficult, isn't it? Because you've got Lance Stroll, who's not an out-and-out -out point scorer. In fact... I mean, any other team, Lance Stroll would be gone by now. It's only because his dad's there that he's still there. I've, I saw one article today saying that Lance Stroll is a good driver and Lawrence Stroll's goal is still to have him be world champion. Lance Stroll peaked a couple of years ago and even that wasn't great. And he's not getting any better. I think the most likely name I've seen linked with it is Daniel Ricciardo. And I think that's a bit of a backwards step for Aston Martin. I really think Daniel Ricciardo, he just doesn't seem to have the motivation anymore. Yeah, I know he took that lucky win at Monza last year, but he's not the Daniel Ricciardo of old. And he's another one who should probably just retire. But if he doesn't, I can see him going to Aston Martin. And it's not a bad choice. Like I'm sure Daniel Ricciardo will be decent enough. It's not like Sebastian Vettel's really doing anything too special. And he's had a few good races here and there. But... Aston Martin are, or well, they have been lackluster this year, and they continue to be so. I don't see Mick Schumacher going. I know I've seen Mick Schumacher's name linked, and I think it's just because of the Sebastian Vettel ties, but, like, what does he gain? Is it, I mean, Haas are ahead of Aston Martin. He's a Ferrari employee, Haas are Ferrari powered. It does not make any sense for Mick Schumacher to go to Aston Martin. Same with Guan Yu Zhou, I've seen his name linked. It makes maybe slightly more sense because he's not a Ferrari driver, but then uh, Alfa Romeo and Aston Martin are about the same level, really. Alfa Romeo might be a bit quicker, so again, it's just a sideways, a backwards step. So uh, I don't know who's going to be in the Aston Martin seat. I'd say my best guess is Daniel Ricciardo. I'd say next after that, probably Nick De Vries. See, Nico Hulkenberg drives for the team and he's got 
obviously experience in the car, but he's a reserve driver. I can't see them hiring him full time. Because again, it's a backward step from Vettel and I don't know, I can't really think of anyone else like out of the box. Like there's plenty of good Formula 2 drivers, but you're talking about drivers you're gonna have for a year or two before like they get called up to Alpha Tori or Alpine's reserve driver status. And honestly, Jack, there's a few drivers who missed out. I think Nick DeVries was someone who should have been in Formula 1 a few years ago and never got a chance. I think it'd be great to give him a drive. Luca Giotto, I think he's sort of fallen too far out the limelight, but he was very good in Formula 2. I think he could have done something in Formula 1. But as for Seb Vettel, he's given us many years of entertaining racing. He was a great driver pretty much from the start. I think 2008 when he won at Monza for Toro Rosso. When he... I mean, he was good that season. And I don't think... 2009, the second half of the year, that was when he looked like someone who could be a world champion. The very next year he did it. Four championships in a row. His time at Red Bull ended sourly. Never really had the success at Ferrari that he should have. And then obviously at Aston Martin, he's really just doing a job. So I don't think it's a bad thing for him to retire. I think he's not really going to accomplish anything else in Formula 1. I can't see a big team hiring him. And really in Formula 1, there's only three teams who are going to be winning regularly over the next few seasons, probably. And I think Vettel, it's only been... I mean, he debuted in 2007 at the same time as Hamilton, so they've been around as long as each other. They've been rivals. I think Vettel retiring might start you know, a few other drivers thinking. I think Daniel Ricciardo is probably very much on the edge of his career right now. And you've got Perez is there till 2024. And who else has been around? Bottas is going to be around for another couple of years at least, probably. Really, Lewis Hamilton as well. Is he going to have too much longer? Fernando Alonso, who's been around forever. Like how much longer is he going to go? I mean, I can't believe they're going to sign him to another deal. If they do, that's just... His career is insanely long. You know, when he started racing in Formula 1, I was 11. And now I'm a grown-ass man, and he's still racing in Formula 1. Too many of these names hang around for far too long, and it means a lot of young drivers don't get a chance in Formula 1 because there's just no seats. So I would like to see a few of these names move on. And Sebastian Vettel, I actually like him as a driver, but I think it's the right decision to go now. And it's going to be interesting to see who Aston Martin replace him with. So anyway, just a quick video on Vettel. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and have a good one.